Hi there, my name is Wally, I'm editor of Data Economy today. Here with me I've got Greg Day, um, Vice President and Chief Security Officer at Palo Alto Networks. Um, Greg, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank you. Um, over the last few months we've seen a huge shift around security. So we have the US elections that exposed a lot of cyber security issues around the world. Um, in the data center space we have Lithuania which has halted the data center construction because of some fears around cyber hacking. Um, how has the cyber security landscape shifted over the last few years and what's the new trends going on in the industry? So I think there's probably there's, there's probably almost two times two shifts mm. to me. One is uh, you know what we're seeing is we're becoming more and more digitally dependent. Mm. Everything we have has a digital twin, whether it's online shopping, banking, mm. elections, you name it. At the same time, there are more and more different devices out there, and what we've certainly seen in the last year now is. I think a lot of people started looking and went, well, what's the risk of these devices being breached? But what maybe not so many people saw was actually these mm. devices being used to attack our more mm. traditional mechanisms of, of mm. functioning. Mm. At the same time, actually, we're seeing the threat itself change. And, and really, I think there are probably three things we see very commonly. I said two, I'll add in the third. Mm. Um, one is the real growth of ransomware over the last year or so. And, and this is the really simple concept of what I do is I take your most sensitive or important data okay. and I encrypt it and then I charge you to get it back mm. and because we're becoming more digitally dependent Second the value person. of that is more and more important and we've seen hospitals not being able to do surgery because they can't get access to x-rays and all sorts of other instances mm. at the same time credential theft is still one of the most predominant mm. forms of attack but mm. with the growth of cloud services mm. actually it's really changing the scope of the game mm. because I used to steal or attackers would steal credentials mm to then get into your network and do things. Now actually all they need to do is to steal credentials from a roaming user mm. and then be able to access all of those cloud resources. And if you don't actually have good security in all of those mm. cloud spaces, you may never even see that that breach mm. is going on. And then an oldie, but I suppose, uh, you know, I hate to say kind of coming back for its second iteration mm. is denial of service. Mm. Uh, and again, as we become more dependent on technology for day-to-day -day things, if I can disrupt that service, organizations will either be forced to pay ransom or figure out how they mitigate mm. those kinds of attacks. Mm. And then I reckon a lot of the problems are also caused by legacy technologies, so legacy infrastructure. How can CIOs and CFOs and CSOs manage these new threats which wrecking budgets happening all the time now that? Yeah, and I don't think I've mm. ever seen a CISO or a CIO mm. say, hey, I've got too much budget. <laughs> and, and so... It will never happen. <laughs> you know, the challenge is, in some instances, legacy environments are no longer mm. supported, so how do I make them mm. secure? But actually, the bigger challenge for me is, what we keep doing is adding more and more and more layers of security, and every layer mm. requires people. Mm. And people are actually the most scarce resource that we have. Mm. So I think the challenge for most organizations is to start to take a bit of a step back and re-look at their security and go, mm. rather than me trying to solve 100 problems in 100 different ways mm. that require 100 people to manage them, how do I start to layer these things together under some sort of common platform that allows me to reduce the amount of human effort? And I always think the simplest analogy of this is a bit like if I want to spot a criminal, what you'd often see is a, a police photo fit. Mm. And you see the eyes, the nose, the ears, etc. Mm. And security is kind of like looking at each aspect. One tells me about the nose, the next mm. tells me about the ears. And then a human has mm. to join that together. Mm. We should be able to use cybersecurity in the mm. same way we do with everything else in technology to merge that data together. Mm. Be able to go, hey, I see the whole criminal. Okay. Get the whole picture of the whole thing. And then moving a little bit to the data center industry, and you've got an immediate vision of the whole continent. Uh, do you see data center operators creating the right, the bespoke, uh, strategy around cybersecurity for today's needs? Because as you said, there's a lot of new threats, ransomware, all the sort of threats, and data centers will be critical ever more as we go digital all, all the way. So I, I, I think you kind of almost ties into your previous question here because mm. the first thing is actually what is a data center today? Because I've kind of got some mm. legacy stuff okay. out there and I see a lot of businesses now going, mm. by the time I built a data center, mm. it's no longer fit for what I wanted to do mm. because the world has changed. Mm. So now actually more and more data centers mm. are either virtualized or cloud driven. Mm. And actually even by the very nature of those, mm. you can achieve that just about anybody in the company can go buy into those services. Mm. So what we have is a couple of challenges. One mm. is visibility. Mm. Actually, can I see my data centers? Mm. Can I see who's using them? Can I see what information mm. is flowing? Okay. Can I see what kind of users are actually mm. doing that kind of functionality? Mm. Two then is securing them. Um, you know, what kind of security mm. do I put in there? Mm. Whether it's maybe uh, you know, an Amazon or an Azure service mm. or whether it's something more bespoke. 
can I apply the same mm. kinds of security controls that I've done in the more traditional mm. physical world? Mm. And, and I need to be able to do this in a, in a common hybrid way. I don't want to have, again, something that requires more and more people. I need to bring these things together, mm. one place for security, whether it's in-house, mm. out-house, or mm. somewhere else. And the most important part of this mm. is, today's data center is becoming mm. very dynamic. Mm. I might have one server running one minute, mm. and the next minute, 10 instances of mm. the same server, and then they're back down again. Mm. So my cybersecurity needs to be natively integrated mm. into those architectures mm. so it's as automated mm. as the very environments that it's functioning within. Mm. And then picking up on what you said about the devices and all the IoT things are coming on at the moment, how can data centers and edge computing, all these sort of things come together when it comes to cybersecurity strategy? Because you just mentioned it needs to be one view, consolidated, etc. But then there'll be a lot more just a data center. So there will be a lot more than just the mothership data center, how some people call it. Um, how does it all come together? in the new cyberspace? Yeah, and I think it really comes together in the new cyberspace mm. by starting to mm. realize that the only way you mm. achieve this is through having the right mm. partnerships and the right integration points. Okay. And, and I think if you look at the market mm. traditionally, you know, you talk about the edge, mm. you'd go to one security vendor that would provide security mm. for your devices. You'd go to a different security vendor that would provide mm. security for your network. Mm. You'd go to a completely different vendor mm. to talk about cybersecurity in the virtualized world. Mm. And actually what we need is all of those different components mm. to natively communicate with each mm. other. So if I discover a threat mm. uh, on your smart device, then my network should mm. gain that same knowledge as should my data center, whether mm. it's virtual or, or physical. Mm. Uh, and so that means we need to start to look at how those security components work under a common platform but just as importantly, how they actually natively integrate into mm. some of those different architectures. And again, if I take something like um, maybe a cloud service, um, you know, I need to be able to understand, as I spool up a new server in that data center, what kind of server is mm. it? Therefore, what kind of security policies mm. is it? Therefore, how do I dynamically mm. bring up the relative security controls mm. and, and then make sure that's visible within my mm. common architecture so it can learn from everything else around mm. it and the same as it's pulled back mm. down again. Mm. And then looking at a big, big cybersecurity provider like Palo Alto Networks, how does a company like Palo Alto Networks keep itself safe? What's your cybersecurity strategy? So I think you know one of the great things for me at Palo Alto Networks mm. is um, you know I think we're a very mm. forward-looking company, mm. so we're forever looking at you know what are the new technologies mm. and tools okay. that helps our business mm. function. And I think we are in many ways like many other organisations. So what we have to do is to look and go. What are the risks that come from those? How do we how do we manage those? And I think the most important part of that is it's not just about cybersecurity technology. A lot of it is about the process around it, but also educating all of the employees that are using those different capabilities. And that starts really right from day one as people join our company. Okay. We put them through things like some very simple spear phishing challenges just to make them sit up and take note. Often people join us, not necessarily from a cybersecurity background, as to actually what this is, why it's important to them. So I think you, know, you have to have a top-down culture that says cybersecurity is important. It's a responsibility for everybody in the business, and it's about understanding what are the risks to your business, and make sure you put in the relative controls for that. And, and you know, one of our core mandates is putting in capabilities to focus on actually preventing rather than discovering and responding mm. to incidents. Mm. And then what can we expect from you over the next couple of months in Europe? Any new products, any new expansions, any new customers, anything that you can reveal? Um, what's going to be the future of Palo Alto in Europe? Sure, and I think, you know, um, one of the things we've done very recently um, that I think is probably one of the most important things we've mm. done is mm. in line with the new regulations mm. that are coming out, GDPR and the NIS mm. Directive, there is more and more want for mm. organizations to leverage the cloud, mm. but to keep it local. Mm. Um, and so we released a, a new instance of our wildfire data center. This is mm. the method in which when we find a new threat, customers can submit it up and we do the analysis in the cloud and we get them a response within mm. five minutes. Mm. But due to discussions mm. around privacy and legislation, customers want to keep that mm. local. So we've built a new wildfire data center in mm. Europe that allows customers to have global protection, but keep their information local. Um, and we will continue to expand that out with our other cloud capabilities. And I think what you're really going to see from us more in 2017 is moving further and further down with, if you like, this technology evolution, which is, I think we've moved from a 
a, a, a cloud maybe mm -hmm. to a cloud first mm -hmm. and, and in the future probably more and more a cloud mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to build security capabilities mm -hmm. that link and integrate mm -hmm. in those cloud services okay. but in a way mm -hmm. that meets European customer mm -hmm. requirements to keep their data local and then links and integrates that back to all of the end devices mm -hmm. and, and the traditional core networks that they have. And then in Europe we are more or less a year away from GDPR coming into force. So how does that all tie back to the GDPR? Well, I think 2018 May is, is when mm. it comes into mm. enforcement, mm. but really, um, you know, organizations, I would say starting a year ago, have mm. been really starting to sit up mm. and take note and say, you know, GDPR requires, you know, relative regard mm. for state of the art. And so it's a great opportunity. We're seeing a lot of companies come back to us and say, this is our chance to step back and relook at what we've built over 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. and decide whether some of those kind of fundamental premises mm. are still fit for purpose. Mm. Great example is endpoint security. Mm. Just about every organization mm. has traditional antivirus and some of the other components. Mm. And with the growth of ransomware, what we've now started to see them say mm. is, is that still the right tool? Mm. Do we need to have more or less that tool? Or do we replace mm. it with a different tool? Mm. Yeah, I find it really interesting that you're saying that essentially companies are looking to the GDPR as an opportunity to change and move forward. Um, you've also been recently involved in the launch of these new books, Navigating Digital. Uh, what's Navigating Digi the Digital Age about? Yeah, so um, this is actually something that was instigated about two years mm. ago uh, as a partnership actually in the US with the New York Stock Exchange. Mm. And, and the guys there was executives of uh, in US companies mm. needed to go through some level of cyber certification. Mm. And whilst there were a myriad of, I think, very technical mm. cybersecurity books, mm. there wasn't something that really mm. helped them. Um, yeah. And off the success of that, uh, we've launched this book in the UK with Forbes, where we've reached out to a number of industry experts, um, whether that's in cyber insurance, incident mm. response, cybersecurity policy, and said, can you write just a very short reference chapter mm. aimed at executives, mm. board members, that helps them get their head around a topic mm. that they've struggled with? Mm puts it into simple business language and then also mm. arms them with the mm. questions they should be challenging mm. their own businesses with. Okay. And then if our viewers want to, to get the book, where, they can, where can they get the book from? So they can download it mm. uh, either as a Kindle or a mm. PDF edition mm. or we, they can also request mm. hard copies from um, our website mm. which is okay. paloaltonetworks.com okay. or uh, securityroundtable.org. Mm. Okay, Greg, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank uh, you. Don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. 